And now we are going to turn to our final uh, keynote. And we are delighted to welcome as our distinguished closing speaker, Lisa Stone, who is the chief commun community officer of She Knows Media and a co-founder of BlogHer, Inc. Lisa has been named one of Fortune's most powerful women entrepreneurs and one of Fast Company's thousand most creative people in business. And I should also mention that she is a former board member um, uh, for the IWMF. Lisa is deeply committed uh, to amplifying women's voices in media. All of the work she does is a clear demonstration of that. And tonight, we're about to hear from her and a special mystery guest about going beyond just talking the talk to actually walking the walk as we all find a way together to walk forward. So please uh, join me in welcoming Lisa Stone. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much. Can I ask everyone to just join me in thanking Barbara Rubb, Elisa Munoz, Nadine Hoffman, and this amazing team. I am very complimented that you all invited me to come here today, and I know for a fact that many of you could be up here giving a keynote yourselves. So with that collaborative respect, I wanted to tell you I am stunned by what I've heard in the past 24 hours. You all have the vision to, and the creativity to architect the next generation of leadership for women in news media. It is phenomenal to see the global reach you've attained, whether or not you have the cultural acceptance or legal right to do so. You are clearly architecting different media models that are designed to benefit from a structure and a metric, regardless of your gender, and even though we neither have access to nor control enough venture capital to make all of them go. That said, I think we can all agree on one thing, which is you are done asking for permission to run news initiatives. Am I right? OK. So with that, I'd like to offer up to you the one secret ingredient that made Blog Her a success. A great idea often fails without this secret ingredient when it comes to later stage media initiatives. And I'll invite out a distinguished guest to join me in offering up this ingredient to you all. Uh, but first, let me tell you how I discovered it. In 2005, I co-founded BlogHer with Elisa Camelhort page and Jory Desjardins. We wanted to answer the question, where are the women who blog? And at that time, um, we went forward with a conference, and then we built a company based upon our belief that there was a huge for-profit opportunity in publishing based upon the quality content and addictive conversations we saw women conducting across social media. Now, this was in 2005, before Facebook. Women blogging, people thought we were insane. So naturally, I became CEO. Uh, we had zero family connections. We were not celebrities. We had never raised venture capital. Um, but I won't deny that um, as a white woman with a Harvard Neiman Fellowship on my resume, I had the ability to get some doors opened. But having sat, never raised venture capital, I certainly couldn't uh, close the deal without a lot of help. So here is what we did. Uh, because we had no connections, we had to rely on our conviction. And that conviction was based on our experience and our data, based on what we were already seeing as bloggers. Between us, we had about 13 blogs, and I had already worked for 10,000 hours, a la Malcolm Gladwell in newsrooms, and another 10,000 hours in startups. So I had courage of my convictions. Um, here's what was so interesting about what happened next. For the next 10 years as CEO, I worked across technology, advertising, product, content, community, finance, and managed a board. We bootstrapped for two years, and then because of our secret ingredient, we were able to raise venture capital. We ultimately raised 20 million in venture capital. That is roughly 30% um, uh, to 5% of what our competitors in this space raised. 
Uh, we became publishers. We assigned and published content across blogs and when social media was born across Facebook and Pinterest. Uh, we ultimately attained a reach of 100 million. We then coded a technology platform in order to take credit for and be accountable for those 100 million unique reach every month to our advertisers. And in the last five years of the company, we were able to pay out more than $36 million in content payments and advertising revenue shares to nearly 6,000 other women and some men who were creating content and photography that we were using. My last official act as CEO was the successful sale of Blogger to She Knows Media. Together we reach 85 million uniques a month according to Comscore, another 165 million across social media. We are vying for number one in the lifestyle category and we have the single highest concentration of women online higher than Pinterest. So that, thank you. Now, I am now 250 years old. I feel every day of that. Um, and um, I will tell you, uh, the question becomes, why did it work? And I think a lot about this. Elisa Jory and I talk about it all the time. And the solution is something that you can use and we're gonna offer you an opportunity to use it. The solution for us uh, was that um, conversations between women about issues of massive burning importance and need in their everyday lives are addictive, right? It's so stupid simple that let me put it in VC speak for you, okay? Turns out that quality content, and you must start with quality content, if it is both socially enabled and inclusive of each other, can gain the attention of the most sought after consumer on the planet, the female who controls 83% of household spending here in the United States and will contribute 70% of growth internationally in household spending over the next five years. So what does that really mean? I'm talking about the need to get what you're doing creating every day distributed, right? I'm talking about scale. Scale. Scale isn't a bad word, it's a sacred word. And the question becomes, how do you do it in a way that doesn't require you to spend a single penny on the false profit of search engine optimization or paying people to promote you? I'm talking about the kind of rock solid partnership that helps you develop relationships and distribution that will get you through the bad times. And I specifically remember the bad times in the American advertising economy, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010. And every single year, Elise and Jory and I were like, well, that's it, we're done, we're dead. Like 17 times a year. So let me be very specific. Um, when we started, we had a conference to answer the question, where are the women who blog? 305 women showed up from four continents. We accidentally made money on the $99 a day price we charged in order to help pay uh, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and help some people buy airplane tickets to come talk. It was all community contributed content. We surveyed them afterwards and asked what they wanted. More conferences, a website where they could get together, and ideally they would like to be paid for their own quality content. Thank you very much. They felt that they were contributing enormous value. And we knew there were already people who were bigger than Katie or Martha or Oprah sitting in the room, right? So we made a decision that based on our experience, we were going to try to offer more of what they wanted. So we got on the phone. We begged, we invited, we cajoled. We recruited 60 six zero volunteer editors on an open source site on blogger.org, even though we had no intention of being not for profit because we wanted to pay women to write. And in year two, we had 186 bloggers in a blog network where my co-founder Joy was frantically selling advertising, right, all by herself. And we had another conference. In year three, we had a thousand women on a wait list. We had two conferences and we decided that we were able to raise venture capital. And we were able to raise venture capital because we were able to point at this rock solid community, their commentary, their blogging, their attendance, they're willing to pay for our product and their desire 
to help meet the quality standards that we as journalists all know are so important that were essential for Fortune 1,500, 150 advertisers to pay to play with us. It was a huge communal effort. Talk about the all boats being lifted together. And hard newsies, I have great news for you. It turns out that the issues of burning importance in our day-to-day -day life, yes, sometimes it's lipstick. Sometimes it's fashion. Sometimes it's things I'm not going to talk about here on the stage. But it definitely is always the things that matter most to us. We have talked a lot over the past day. This is one word I would do away with, and that is niche. I'm not interested in your niche. I'm interested in your depth, OK? Look at I can't breathe, hashtag. Look at Black Lives Matter, right? Three women I've never even met changed news coverage internationally forever. And I will tell you, it was a bittersweet moment for me a month after we did the deal to watch three women I respect who have contributed enormously to the blogger community take to Twitter and rule the conversation there as very important social commentators and columnists. At Feminista Jones, at Professor Kim, and Kerry Washington. Three women who would never have been invited into the op-ed columns of the traditional newsrooms I love and came up from. And frankly, today, unfortunately, to the recent report from Neiman Labs, Where Are the Women? Unless we started ourselves digitally, it ain't going to happen, right? But it was sweet because they did it. And they weren't apologetic. And they took everything by storm. That's happening on deep sites like yours. Just a couple of examples. I absolutely love, where's Cynthia Liu? K through 12 education, changing the way parents approach education in their communities. Other great examples. Look at people like Catherine Stone, no relation. She has changed American law with regard to the treatment of postpartum illness with postpartum.org. Shannon Rosa, squidalicious.com. She has made and created the single most amazing site for parents whose children are experiencing autism or who have an autistic person in their family. It's incredible. There are people saving lives every day. Look at the Afghan Women Writers Project or also Violence and Silence by Maggie Schultz. And then there are the people who just plain open our minds with what they blog. Demetria Lucas here at Bell in Brooklyn, um, who interviewed Kerry Washington at our conference last summer, is just phenomenal, right? And of course, she writes on theroot.com. So I'm not trying to say that it's easy. I am trying to say that knitted together, the partnership across all those blogs, and all those bloggers now know each other, has made it possible for us to keep doing what we're doing and to ultimately succeed and pay each other and pay ourselves and change the world. Because it's actually not about scale. It's about getting found and getting distributed. So as She Knows Media's now chief community officer, my job is knitting together the fabric of these conversations of value, of deep value that are splintering across the social media sphere and push them back onto what She Knows Media has now as a massive global stage. And to do that, I would like to invite a dear friend of mine who also is the chief executive officer of Public Radio International, Elisa Miller, out to talk about a little project that she and I have cooked up. Uh, she started it, but I joined it. And uh, take it away, Elisa, oh. and then we'll Take some questions if you're interested. Thank you. What an exciting day of, of conversation. I'm just honored to be here. And I'm honored to announce the next phase of PRI's Across Women's Lives, which is an initiative that we launched at the Clinton Global Initiative this last fall. And it's around SKM's and PRI's effort around hashtag women's lives. But I want to tell you a bit about Across Women's Lives first because I think it helps put this into context. Across Women's Lives is based on one key premise, that issues and stories about women and girls around the world are newsworthy. Yes. And in fact, and in fact they're essential. So essential that women's rights coverage will make up between 16 and 17% of all of PRI's coverage. 
That percentage equals how the broader news cycle covers topics like business. Because we believe it's that important. And I'm not talking about stories featuring Kim Kardashian's Furkini, although it is riveting and also quite interesting. But it's not the kind of stories that we're talking about. Because since the beginning, PRI has really tried to forge new ground by not buying into the lemming mentality of the same old news cycle. We believe that Across Women's Lives is the latest example of this work. We seek to increase knowledge and engagement around the positive power of women around the world. Unfortunately, and I know it's not news to any of you, uh, and depending on the facts that we use, women's rights and related issues only makes up 6% of all coverage. And if we're talking about the core women's rights issues, it's less than 1.5% of what we see uh, in the news cycle. Our plan is not only to reach millions of people with what we're doing, but also to establish that global women's and girls' issues is a part of what should be regularly covered by everyone. Because we all know, and everyone in this world room knows, that the positive impact of women on society is exponential. We are going to focus on audio, text, video, infographics, focused on women in health and reproduction, justice, education, political and economic power, and combating climate change. So now it comes to our groundbreaking partnership that Lisa and I are talking about and wanting to walk the walk and take another step forward. We're launching our effort to launch a social publishing news incubator. What is that, you might ask? Well, it's a unique combination of news content, technology, and community. We'll use the Women's Lives hashtag and leverage PRI's journalism and our reach combined with a social conversation that Lisa was talking about that's so powerful, and SKM's technology platform, all led on this part by She Knows Media, to publish and promote serious journalism about women's lives, and we intend to report on the results. We'll use She Knows Media's proprietary technology platform to activate some of the community's 21,000 expert profiles across owned and operated sites, blogs, and social media. Together, we will measure the impact and report back on how successful we are at amplifying and distributing content by, for, and about women via unpaid organic shares and contributed commentary. The PRI SKM Incubator will officially launch February 3rd. It's coming up. <laughs> and we expect to play an important role, that it will play an important role in extending the reach and engagement of, award -winning, of our award-winning journalism to nearly 100 million people across public radio, digital, and social media. I hope you all might be interested in participating either by contributing quality content or participating in the conversation. And here's how you can do it. Number one, use the Women's Lives hashtag on your content to promote your coverage of women's lives if it fits with our description of our coverage, so on those same topical areas. It is absolutely a win-win in terms of fostering discoverability and having people find your content and helping build conversation. And number two, leverage what we're learning together. Email lisa.stone at sheknows.com with women's lives in the subject line. And we'll send you a regular update on progress in the incubator, as well as any data that we release on the measurable ROI of this initiative, so you can see how you're benefiting. We anticipate success with this, including more opportunities for the hashtag Women's Lives community. So I really hope you'll join us. We're excited about it, and we can't wait to get started. Thank you. I see from Barbara's indication we have time for a few questions, if you have any. And we have our intrepid mic runners who get the first drink this evening at Bloomberg. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. 
It's very uh, simple. What about if your content is in another language? So if your content is in another language, one of the benefits of the Women's Lives hashtag is that if you use it on Facebook or on Twitter, people who speak your language will be able to find it. And while the majority of the massive community that we reach now is primarily Anglophone, there are a growing number of multilingual people. We encourage you to continue it. Yes, ma'am, right here in the front. How are you thinking about impact beyond reach and engagement? Why don't you take it from the news perspective okay. and then I'll take it with regard to the activation. One of the things that we're doing is we're doing a lot of perceptual research about knowledge that people have actually about how women are or are not or their perception about how women are or are not contributing um, to success of society. And uh, we'll be releasing some benchmarks of the before and after. Um, and you'd be really interested it's really interesting to see some of the research about kind of very broadly held perception, for example, that men work so much more than women. And it's kind of a big, broadly held perception, but in fact, women are the, on a societal level are actually, both in the developing world and the developed world, tend to work more hours, more hours um, on a weekly basis. So it's, it's kind of things like that where there's literally benchmarks of how we've been socialized across numerous societies that you know, we're trying to combat some of that. So it'll be a perceptual research as well as we are going to be trying to look and track based on the content what kind of actions people are taking. We're using certain social listening um, capabilities um, but also uh, trying to just track based on what people are telling us. So. It's going to be a variety of things, but we're definitely kind of fixated on how to measure and what to measure as a part of it. And obviously, reach is a gateway, um, but it's not the end. It's just the beginning. That's a great answer, and I think I would add to that. It's not just about, um, for me, it's not just where are the women in traditional and digital newsroom leadership. It's about where are the stories about women in mainstream media, because uh, the communities I mentioned are communities who fill the void. And so um, the reason I put a showcase of the dashboard that we built at BlogCar that is now part of She Knows Media is that it's designed to um, remove the subjective or even emotional elements of the conversation about why women and children matter and instead put behind it some real metrics because in a perfect world, we'll be able to bring back a case study that will say, Okay, publishers, women use social media 41% more often than men do. We're the majority of internet users. We control 83% of household spending. And oh, look, if you invest in stories by and about women and you share them, you might get a higher return on investment for your news gathering and your 501c3 funders or your advertisers might appreciate you more if you did that. Is that helpful? It's a great question. I have them. One last question. She has the mic, so she's she, in control. She has so the con. Can I just go Take it. Sorry, it Take cannot it. be. Yeah. I don't know who I leaned out, but I'm going to just lean it. Um, I have a question for you, Lisa. Um, what are your thoughts on platisher? Just the word platisher, the idea of a platform plus publisher community con con contributions. Um, I'm asking because uh, through our lens as a news organization that produces mostly original reporting, but has also always um, tried to include community contributions that are edited. We are always juggling how much should we invest in the community contribution side, and um, just really eager to hear your thoughts about how that's evolved over time in terms of sustainability business model given social media and platforms that people have access to beyond our site. That's a great question. And of course, I started doing this. My, the first blog network I started for law.com was in 2004 with people like the SCOTUS blog and Volat Conspiracy with you know, $45 CPMs. And I talked my way into the newsroom by saying, these blogs are cited on Ninth Circuit court briefs, so um, they're players, sorry. Um, larger spectrum with Platisher, it comes down to quality content. It turns out that the audience is always smarter than any one reporter because it looks at any given day, my favorite 
illustration or, or cartoon about reporting when I was a, a journalist was a, a, a group of people lined up in front of a bullseye, and it said, today you are a nuclear physicist, parent of quadruplets, <laughs> excellent French chef, right? And so since the audience is always smarter than we are, if you put community guidelines in place and you make those very clear about what you require and you even ask people to self-credential, right? Um, by linking to the rest of their social media and by owning their identity instead of being anonymous, then I think that you have a toehold in quality content. Um, that was a long-winded answer. What would you add? I think that's really a good answer. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Thank you all. Thank you for listening, and we hope you'll join us. We really want to shine a light on your initiatives because so many people have helped uh, blog her and certainly PRI, tell excellent journalism, and we completely believe in what you're doing. Thank you for your time. Thank you.